picking here. I am done with day one at ASD Market Week in Las Vegas, and I want to share what I've learned because my brain is exploding with information. So if you have a question, um, my hubby, my camera guy, will tell me what it is if you guys throw it up there. So um, some of the tips that I learned that I want to let you know if you ever attend ASD Market Week um, that would be helpful. I wish I knew these things before I came, and so I just want to kind of break it down and let you know what I learned as a from a reseller's perspective. So easiest thing, registration. Registration is you go online and you need to register for the show. It's absolutely free to do, and so I want to make sure that you guys um, – no, you got to go on and put on your in all your information and asks you know are you a retailer or an e-commerce or whatever. So um, once you register, you uh, get an email about anywhere from three to a week before the actual show. Print the barcode with that because it makes it a lot easier to check in. When you show up at the show, there's a registration time. Um, my registration time was on Monday. Well. It starts on Sunday. We did. We were traveling on Sunday, and so I registered Monday morning. We were able to get in an hour early to register, and I thought I needed an hour, but it was really, really fast. I walked right up to the counter. I had my printed sheet of paper with a barcode. They scan the barcode, and then make sure you bring a photo ID because they check it with the registration. Then they print you one of these cards. You must wear these everywhere you go. They will not let you in to the convention without one of these tags on. There are green ones for people who are exhibitors or the people that are vendors selling, trying to sell things to you. And then all the people that are trying to buy uh, will have a purple one. Mine says e commerce at the bottom. Um, and then there were some people that I saw that said retail or it said um, just uh, guest attendee, things like that. But ours says e, e commerce because we're online sellers. And that gives an idea to the vendors who they're talking to. This also, this little barcode square in the corner also has all your information on it. And some of the vendors actually had a little scanner where they could scan it and it puts all the details into their system so they don't have to write everything down. So just be aware um, that that was really, really easy. It took me about 10 minutes. So we had a bunch of time to kill. And so we uh, actually, the first place I wanted to go was the furthest away from where we entered the building. And so it gave us time to walk down there and figure out there are cafes uh, inside the convention center. And so I really wanted a Starbucks before I left my hotel. I'm actually staying at the Westgate Hotel in Las Vegas, which is actually right next to the convention center. It's super awesome. Um, so, but anything along the monorail is going to be easy to get to. And then they also offer shuttle services to the convention center. So if you're staying at another hotel, a lot of times you can get a shuttle that comes to the ASD Market Week convention center. So those are options for you. But anyway, I wanted a Starbucks and there are actually a Starbucks's and different cafes inside the convention center. And so you can also eat once you get there. So if you show up a little bit earlier, that's an option. They have a lot of food eateries, but just be aware that you are close to the Las Vegas Strip. Everything is extremely expensive. A bottle of water is typically four to 450 in price. Um, all sodas usually run around $3 to $4. And so just be aware of that. Um, I would suggest as a tip for you guys, bring some bottled water with you. Um, bring some snacks, you know, 100 calorie packs or granola bars or something to keep in your backpack while you're at the convention center. Also, make sure you bring a backpack with you um, because you're going to get a lot of information. There are people that give you um, whole folders of information, catalogs, and tons and tons and tons and tons of business cards where you're going to want to have a bag or a backpack. So thankfully, I brought my hubby along, so he wore the backpack, and I didn't have to. So thank you, sweetie. Um, so... Make sure that you, um, if you're going to come, bring a business card with you. I currently don't have a business card, but I was kind of okay with that because when um, they ask for your information, you could hand over your business card. But there were a few vendors that I was like, mm, even though I'm talking with you, the more I talk with you, I know it's not going to work for me. And so I didn't really want them to have my information because I knew I just wasn't going to buy from that particular seller. And so um, it's totally up to you. There's a lot of vendors that have little jars on their table that you can win something and things of that nature. Um, so you could drop your business card in there if you want it. Um, 
Also, um, use your app. Uh, they have an ASD Market Week app. Um, the one thing that I was concerned about is for the longest time when I downloaded the app on my phone, it had the previous ASD Market Week schedule on it. They have one in March and then they also have one in August and it said March forever. It really didn't switch over to August till about three weeks to a month before we actually came. But once it switches over, it gives you a list of vendors that you can look for and um, you can even look for them under categories and things like that and it shows you on the map where they're at. That's really convenient and so when I went in today, I knew a lot of the vendors I wanted to see were in the South Hall on the upper level, which is where all the wholesalers were and I'll tell you a little bit more that, about that in a minute. About the app is, it also shows you all the sessions that they have and on what day and where at they're going to be. I went to one session that was all about private labeling. I learned a little bit, but for the most part, it was kind of similar to what I had already learned on YouTube from other YouTube seller, uh, YouTube resellers. And so um, it wasn't super beneficial for me. If you're brand new into the reselling world, you may find these sessions really awesome and amazing. But I actually ended up leaving halfway through the session because I wanted to go see more vendors. And so um, so that was, um, you can look up the sessions and see, does anything sound interesting to you and where are they going to actually have that going on? Um, the other thing I would suggest is be willing to bring some cash with you. There are some vendors that are willing to sell the product that's right in front of them. Um, they, they may require different quantities that you buy, but, um, Bring some cash with you. I actually did purchase some very small things that I know I can put in my suitcase for the ride home, but um, go ahead and bring that with you so that you can buy something if you so choose to. Um, if you're concerned about how to get it home, I actually flew here and so obviously I can't buy anything humongous um, because of the concern of flying. There are a lot of the vendors that are um, prepared to thing. Um, there's uh, three FedEx offices. Um, there's one actually right in the convention center. And then I actually passed two walking back to my hotel, which is right next door to the convention center. So if you do buy something that's larger, you can bring it to the FedEx office, let them package it, and you can ship it ba basically back home to yourself. So that's an option to uh, consider as well. Um, uh, one of the biggest things that I was so thankful for is, yes, you're coming to a business reselling convention and you need to look business like I wore this to the convention center and I was very thankful because it was over 100 degrees outside it was nice in the convention center but anytime we walked outside it was hot and wear your walking shoes um, I actually walked only one of the five floors in the convention center I completely covered one whole floor though and I was really glad um, and I walked 6.5 miles in that one floor and so bring your walking shoes and make sure you know be less worried about what you look like and more worried about what your feet are gonna feel like by the end of the day my knees and feet were burning uh, my hubby gave me a foot rub though so that was awesome um, the other thing I would suggest to is bring a backpack or a rolling bag with you. I saw a lot of people that were going around and they um, would, you, you get tons of information from people. You get lots of business cards, um, lots of packets and um, like this and catalogs and things like that. And so you're going to want to have a place to put it as well as maybe carrying your bottle of water and things of that nature. And so my husband actually wore a backpack and anytime we got information, I was able to just put it in the backpack and then you don't have your hands so full there were some also some people that had those rolling little kind of briefcases and so that's an option as well to bring um, if you don't feel like you can carry things they do have motorized scooters that I saw a lot of people with I'm not sure where they rented them from but I'm pretty sure that the convention center offered those as well and I saw people of various ages in those motorized scooters um, one of the things that you're going to get from a lot of the vendors is business cards. Um, one of the first questions I asked if I was interested in any of the products on their shelves was, do you have a business card? Before I asked them any other question, and this is my reason why. This is not an original idea to me. I learned it from another YouTuber that had gone to ASD Market Week, but I had gotten a... Um, they suggested anytime you get any information from that particular vendor, take their business card and then write the information on the back of the business card. It's a lot easier than trying to ruffle through a notebook and trying to make sense of chicken scratch. So what I did was um, I wrote all the information that I knew about them, some of the products that I was interested in. I wrote those on the back of the business cards as well so that I can remember what I did that day. I probably talked to 
seriously talked to about 20 to 30 different vendors of people that I actually wanted to purchase some items from, whether they were wholesalers, liquidation, um, closeout people, and then people that were just, they were importing um, products and then you could buy direct from them in the United States. So various different people on that one level that I talked to. Um, when I did talk to a vendor, um, I asked three main questions and this was, I kind of learned this as I went along and so I'm hoping I can cut the learning curve out for you guys and just offer this information to you. Very first thing that I asked them once it got towards the end of the day, I knew these are the questions they asked is, do you have a minimum purchase price? There were a lot of vendors that they pretty much required you to buy a certain amount dollar wise from them before they would even ship, be willing to ship to you. There were some that had no minimum purchase price. They maybe had a quantity that they wanted you to buy. Um, there were some that you could buy one, you know, um, but uh, there were some that had a $100 minimum purchase price, $500 minimum purchase price, a $1,000 minimum minimum purchase price and even up to $2,500 minimum prices. So the $2,500 ones usually ran in the kind of the truckloads pallet type of wholesale liquidation companies. Um, some of them were regular like toy vendors and things like that. So that's a lot of toys for $2,500. When I asked the minimum purchase price, I'd say about 50% of them either had no minimum purchase price or a hundred dollars and then another group um in that 50 percent there was also another group that had about a thousand dollar minimum purchase price so um it seemed like a thousand or a hundred dollars is kind of the standard for most of them depending on what you were gonna get um the other question that I asked, so that's the first question that I asked is the minimum purchase price. The other question that I always ask is where are you going to ship it from? Um, a lot of people, there were actually a couple of companies from California that when they found out I was from the Midwest, they really shied away from even wanting to ship to me because they knew there was no margin in it once I had to pay the freight to get it to me. Uh, and so uh, there were also other companies that would ship straight direct from their factory uh, to the Amazon warehouse for you. All you had to do is send them the um, the labels and they would actually label it for you. And so uh, take that into consideration because um, some people really like to do that where um, they ship it directly to the Amazon warehouse uh, for you. Uh, the other thing um, that... Uh, um, oh, as far as shipping it to you, there were also some companies that, like when you look at their name tag, they're based out of maybe New York or New Jersey, um, and you're like, oh, I'm going to have to pay to ship it from New Jersey. Well, they actually had um, some warehouse places somewhere closer to me in the Midwest, so they had some in Indiana, Ohio, and things like that. And so what I thought was going to be a large shipping cost turned out not to be because they were much closer uh, to me. So take that into consideration. Some websites sites have the option to choose which location you get stuff from, uh, which warehouse holds what. And so look at all of the, those things. Um, and so, uh, and then the, the, so the first thing was minimum purchase price. Where do you ship from location wise? And then the last thing that you ask them, is there a minimum quantity that I have to purchase? And I'll, usually the standard, uh, uh, answer to that question was you have to buy it in like the case. So like if you have a box that normally holds 12 widgets, um, they would require you to buy in increments of 12, or maybe they required you to buy, you know, 48 of them in order to purchase that particular item. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, I'm used to working with companies that kind of pre-fill the boxes and then you go through it and go, okay, yeah, I think I can make a buck and then you buy it. But there were quite a few companies that they had a minimum purchase requirement of $1,000, but you could mix and match what you put in there and you can kind of hand pick and make your own palette or case depending on how large the items were. And so there were quite a few companies like that. Um, there, were a, there were a lot of companies, this really surprised me, a lot of companies that I'm used to dealing with, look online, look at all the stuff, look at the price, okay, I can make a buck, purchase the, the product, okay? So that's what I'm used to, is getting to see a manifest and knowing ex pretty, pretty close to exactly what I'm gonna buy. There were a lot of companies, no e-commerce website at all. Like, they would say, oh, I'll send out email blasts of our current inventory, and then you have to pick from there, or you have to call a sales rep. Now, 
um, don't discount that. Yes, it's a little bit more work on our our side as the buyer, but there's a lot of people that are unwilling to do that work as resellers. And so you may find a really good deal just because you call your sales rep and they can either negotiate with you or you can get exactly this particular type of product instead of getting all that other junk that comes with the pre-made packages. So there's good and bad in both of those things. And so take it into consideration. I was really surprised how how many of them didn't have their product displayed online and you were going to have to kind of call a person and and do the actual uh, chatting back and forth which can be a little bit nerve-wracking but you know stick to your guns you can do it um let me see what else i wanted to talk about um cool things that i got to see um cool things that i got to see um when I was there, there was this program um, called the flywheel program. And it's basically made by a bunch of guys who were really, really good at private labeling. And there's a lot that goes into private labeling to make sure that your product actually moves. So once you create a listing on Amazon or eBay or whatever it is, um, you've got to get your name out there and you've got to get your product out there and you got to make sure that it sells to people that actually want to buy it. And how do you know if it's going to buy and all these other details. Well, Flywheel makes this program. It's a subscription-based program. I think it's like 30 or 40 bucks a month that um, does all of that for you. It gives you the keywords to put in. It shows you how you best describe this type of item. And then it goes through and it looks on Amazon and it says, okay, you've got this widget. How many widgets are almost like that? And is Amazon selling it? And how much is it selling it per month? And how much would you have to buy it for in order to make a profit? So it gives you a lot of those details. And so that was really, really neat to kind of find that program. So I'm getting ready to hopefully jump into the private label genre and I uh, am thinking maybe that might be a help to me. Um, the subscription fee makes me a little nervous, but um, the they actually did a demo with me there and it was really, really cool. Um, I saw this awesome teddy bear while I was in the gifts and... Um, section where was humongous i'm actually gonna um do a video when i get home from vegas so we get home on friday should be able to put out a video sometime um the, within a week after i get home but this and i have a picture of this teddy bear it's literally twice the size as me it's awesome <laughs> i wanted to take it home just then but it was really fun so that's a cool thing i saw um another thing was i saw this awesome light box it was about the size of a mini fridge maybe a little larger um but it had this turnstile in it and it was bottom lit and they actually had a nike shoe displayed on it and according to the company they actually i think it was called light pro i don't remember what it's called anyway um i have their business card because i think i picked up 20 business cards today but um it was bottom lit and lit all the way around as an LED light box. Um, if you've ever seen those little tiny ones that you do for jewelry, this was like this one on steroids. Um, and it had a rotating turntable that came with a program that you connect directly to the camera. And this camera would, you'd set it up to take like eight shots. You'd start the turnstile and it'd take a shot, let the things turn a little, take another shot, to turn a little, take another shot. And they looked like gorgeous stock photos and your settings can be saved which is cool because if you have a store like an ebay store or a poshmark store or an amazon store then you can have the same lighting in every single one of your stock photos there's no background that you have to take out of that photo really at all because it's all white background and so um it makes it super easy it connects directly to your computer and it does all the work for you now that light box was about yay big and humongous and it comes with the computer program and the turn cell and everything and we asked how much is this thirteen thousand five hundred dollars i'm like oh hard as heck but that was like the Cadillac of light boxes. They had some smaller ones for like 3000 and they had one that just was the turnstile that you could get like the umbrella lights that photographers use that was much less and so i like wanted to take it home and use it all the time <laughs> but um but I, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, you got to see the cool stuff that was going on. Yes. Charlotte, Charlotte says, great picture of the king. Oh, yes. <laughs> Elvis is in our room. I think we have a photo of Marilyn Monroe. And then we have a uh, Muhammad Ali also in our hotel room. So the joys of staying in Vegas. Thanks for that. Yeah, it is a great picture. <laughs> so he was a handsome dude. So, um... 
I hope this has been helpful. Let me see. Oh, one real quick one. Food is expensive here. Um, so take that into consideration when coming to Las Vegas. My husband and I ate um, twice and both of the meals cost anywhere from 30 to 35 now, don't get me wrong, you're getting food. You're going to be able to eat. Um, I got a big taco salad at the convention center. They have a bunch of cafes and cafeterias there. Um, that filled me up completely. Um, another suggestion I would suggest when walking around the convention center is bring your charging cables for your phone because about halfway through the day, I was already down to 36%. When we ate, they have charging stations that you can plug into the wall. And then we also brought one of the little battery packs um, that we can hook up and it can mobile charge. And so I would suggest definitely bringing those because you're scanning things, you're taking pictures of things, trying to keep track of all your information. Bring a notebook in case you decide to attend any of the sessions. Um, I'm trying to think. Is that uh, it? For all of the things, the suggestion tips and stuff, I think that's it. But that was day one. Um, I went through the wholesaler um, kind of liquidation area. Um, I went through an, a few other product um, type of things. You know, there was like electronics and and um, some other things like that that I went through um, on that first floor. Um, I don't know if I told you that I walked six and a half miles in one day. <laughs> So bring the walking comfortable. Um, but I plan on tomorrow, there's a whole section is called Source Direct. And they have a section where you can source direct from like China and Turkey and India and Indonesia and different places like that, where you can directly get product from them. And so I'm going to really kind of investigate that. I'd love to be able to find some products that I can source on a regular basis. All the ones that I looked at today were primarily liquidation and closeouts. And so it was kind of a turnover. Like I may be able to get 1,200 of these widgets, um, but then in three months I won't be able to get them in, at all anymore because that company doesn't have them anymore because it's a closeout. And so um, that's definitely still on my radar. I don't want to get out of that because that's kind of my... Uh, you know, regular income that comes in. But if I can get some products that I can always source from companies, that would be good. So that's kind of what I'm looking for tomorrow is I'm going to the direct. They've got some U.S. based companies and then they've got some overseas companies. And so I will try put out a live video tomorrow to let you know what I find. Um, hopefully my internet works good. It was a little bit herky-jerky tonight, but um, hopefully you got all the information that I put out and I'll try to around this time tomorrow, put another live video out about day two and what I learned about this, the direct sourcing and um, any of the other details that I find out. And so hopefully this has been helpful. You've gotten a glimpse into the vendor world of ASD Market Week. It's massively huge. And I'm sure I'm only going to see a glimpse of it in the three days that I'm going to attend the shows. Oh, another thing. If you come to the show, you do get discounts on Vegas shows like Circus Soleil and Magic Show.